So my friend called me the other day and said the hard drive on his Mac is broken beyond repair. He was a little distraught because he was worried about all his files and naturally, obviously, <laughs> I asked what about cloud storage he used to back up his files and you know what his response was? None. <laughs> Not even iCloud. Whoops. Well, this got me thinking. How many others aren't backing up files on their Mac to the cloud? So, obviously, making here a YouTube channel about cloud storage services, I decided to make a video about that. Sharing the best cloud storage for Mac so you never end up like my friend. I tested five different cloud storage providers so we can find the best for Mac users. I signed up for Sync.com, pCloud, Mega, and Google Drive. And of course, I looked into iCloud, which is really baked into Mac OS. Considering iCloud is made by Apple, the results of the best option for Mac are, well, rather surprising. I'm not gonna lie. I already know what I think is the best option thanks to having over a decade of experience testing cloud storage. I will get into that a little bit later, but for now, I'll kick them all off on an equal playing field. And to give you some structure, I'll go through the core features, usability, and we'll cover pricing towards the end so you can make a real good decision what's the best service for your pocket. Hey, before I get into this, can I ask you a little favor? 98 of people who watch the videos are unsubscribed. And really great you're loving the content, but please do hit that subscribe button. It helps get more eyes on this channel and helps other people out as well. Thank you very much. First thing I had to do was get the apps downloaded onto my Mac. Google Drive and Sync.com were the easiest to install as it was simple to create a sync folder on my desktop. I had to mess around with my settings and do a system restart to get pCloud and Mega up and running. Nothing is really a deal breaker here, but for less tech savvy folks, Sync.com, Google Drive and iCloud will be the easiest to use and get going. Okay, so let me get my notes straight here. Um, if the term sync folder means nothing to you, I'll quickly explain. It's basically a folder that lives on your computer. Easy, right? If you add a file to any of the cloud storage services folder, I'll use sync.com as an example so you get a better idea. You see how I just dropped the file there? It will now sync across the cloud and I can also access it on the sync.com mobile app and web browser app. So that's a sync folder. You can do this with all of them, by the way. And oh, I should say, you don't need to drag and drop files there all the time. You can also select which folders you want to back up and they'll automatically update whenever you change or save a file. Well, you can do that with essentially most of them. Also, if you're using third-party apps, let's say like Lightroom or DaVinci Resolve, you can export your work to any of the sync folders and they'll go to the cloud and you can access them on different devices, provided that device is connected to the internet and can download that file or sync that file. With iCloud, um, things are slightly different. You can't sync any folder. In fact, you're limited to syncing your desktop and documents. If you store files in any other folder, then they will only exist locally on your hard drive. And as for the files on your desktop and documents, you can access those files on your iPhone or iPad, which the smart kids call being locked in the Apple ecosystem. But well, there you go. At least you had a backup if everything fails, right? As you can see, functionality on all the apps is pretty straightforward. The thing is, even though yeah, they look similar. None of these services are exactly the same. This is where you're gonna see some options become more attractive than others. If we look at sync.com, for example, you can sync every folder on your desktop computer. And let me explain a little further so, so it'll make sense to you. Anything you save to your computer outside of your sync.com folder won't be backed up to the cloud. And with Mega, Google Drive, and pCloud, you can select and back up any folder, even those outside the sync folder. Being able to sync 
Any folder may seem a throwaway feature, but honestly, it's really useful. You don't have to move folders and files into a sync folder so it won't mess up your navigation and you still get to back up all of your files, which is super convenient. Mega gives you the most amount of customization options. So as you can see on screen, not only can you back up any folder, you can also exclude specific files if you don't need to back them up. And that's pretty handy because some of the files can get very big, but you might not need them to occupy storage space. A couple of minor but useful things I want to cover quickly. Block level sync and bandwidth management. Mega and pCloud are currently the only services to offer block level sync and all of them except iCloud provide bandwidth management. Essentially, these features lead to faster file updates in the cloud and better performance when doing other tasks, but they are not total deal breakers. Each service offers what I call backend preferences ways to tweak how you want each of them to function and you can choose if you want them to start syncing as soon as you fire up your computer and you can pause syncing as well as you wish essentially so that's super convenient finding your way around user preferences and other settings is easy on all of them in the top menu on your desktop you'll find logos for each of the providers as you can see all you need to do is left click on a logo and navigate to the settings to tweak iCloud settings you just need to jump into system settings select iCloud and then go from there. What I like about all of them is that they're new user friendly. And if there's something you don't understand, then they all have guides and knowledge bases. Each of their websites are pretty helpful to set it up. I do want to talk about file size limits real quick. Basically, some services will limit how large a file can be that you can essentially send to the cloud. This can be a problem if you are, say, a video creator, because as you know, these files can get many gigabytes in size and sometimes this leads to problems. You're likely going to be okay with most of them. Sync.com, pCloud and Mega have no file size restrictions. Google Drive does, but it's like five terabytes. So unless you're banging out Hollywood productions, you should be probably okay iCloud is the most conservative, restricting file sizes to 50 gigabytes. But again, I doubt most of you will have an issue here. I'm gonna jump into security and privacy. pCloud, Mega, and Sync.com are the front runners. They all offer zero knowledge encryption, which gives you full control over your encryption keys. In simple terms, nobody really outside or inside of those services can access your data. Google Drive doesn't offer this level of privacy. It loves your data and it loves sharing it with others. I get that's the price you pay for the cheapest cloud serve. Actually, wait, it's not even the cheapest. Anyways, more on that shortly when we're gonna look at pricing, but yeah, Google loves your data, that's what I wanna say. iCloud is kinda of in the middle here. You can activate advanced security protection, which is Apple's way of saying you control the encryption keys. It's not on by default though, and if I had to guess, I reckon the average user is unaware it exists. If you're watching this, I'd say activate it if you want the best protection for your files. In terms of uh, everyday security, like ensuring hackers don't get to your files, all of them are fine. They're all using a combination of AES 256 bit encryption and TLS, and these are pretty impenetrable and standard across the web. Let's talk a little bit about file sharing. Of course, all of them have file sharing functionality, and Google Drive, pCloud, and Sync.com allow you to share files directly from the desktop. Most of the time, it works by just right-clicking a file, and then you can share it, and you can adjust certain permissions to that shared link. With pCloud, it's very easy. Right-click it, you get a shared link, you can then send it off via Messenger, or you can send it via an email and invite people directly to that folder. Now, when you log into the web, um, it gives you a little more control over that shared link. So when you want to share a folder or a file, you can then uh, set certain permission levels. So not all of the features are available in most services on the desktop app, but once you log into the web, you have more granular control over who sees what and how your files and folders are accessed. Now, as I say, you can then do with those files and folders whatever you want. You can send them by a messenger, you can send them by an email. Some services also let other people then upload files to those, um, to those folders, even if they don't have uh, an account. So that is sometimes called a request a file feature. So if you're working with third party providers, um, say you're working with freelancers or you, um, 
need something um, uh, from your friends, maybe somebody took some photos that you that they want to share with you, they can just upload it to your main central folder and you would get that file right away. So now <laughs> we've talked a lot about features and you know those services seem to be great, which I tend to agree with. Now let's talk about monies. <laughs> I'm not going to blast you with a load of figures because it doesn't really make sense, but I'm going to bring up the best value so you can find which service is best and I'm going to tell you which is the best value for each service. And as you can see, not much separates them all. Though iCloud is noticeably more expensive and it doesn't offer annual plans. Other than iCloud, I think they all offer great value at the two terabyte price point. They all have other plans to choose from as well. So if you need more or less storage space, there will certainly be an option for you. And clearly sync.com is the cheapest option. This is great news for everyone because it's also the best cloud storage service when we consider core features like privacy, ease of use and productivity. If it's a free plan, well, Mega offers the most storage space coming in with 20 gigabytes. And Google is very close with 15 gigabytes and sync.com and pCloud offer 10 gigabytes. iCloud is the least generous only offering five gigabyte of storage. And I said the results would be surprising. It's natural to think the company that builds Macs would also offer the best cloud storage solution for those Macs. And clearly, that is not the case. For example, if you want to use cloud storage on other platforms like the web or mobile, iCloud just feels like clunky and, and it doesn't offer a great user experience. So it's more like an afterthought for Mac users. The other options all have more polished apps and usability is much better all around in comparison to iCloud. If I'm choosing, if I really had to choose right now for one service, I'd probably sign up for sync.com. But if you need more of a workspace and work with a large group of people, you can't really sleep on Google Drive. Privacy is poor, but its tools are just really great. It depends on what you value the most or what your company needs. I'm gonna leave some links down below so you can sign up for their free accounts and essentially try before you buy so you get a feel for the software, if you like it, if it works for your computer. And I'd really love to know which one you go for and let me know in the comments. And hey, if you enjoy the video, please do subscribe, hit a like and tap that bell icon. Until the next one, see ya.